Hello people at home, it is I, Sir Phenomenal Phoenix, with my PlayStation eye camera at hand, well, on the TV screen, and my glass of red wine and lemonade at hand, oh I know, it's classy. That's the shit. Welcome to my little diary entry that I'm making right now because, you know, it's been a while since I've really connected with any of you people out there. How are you? How's life kicking? I hope it's kicking well for you. I hope it's not... Actually, I hope you're kicking life well and it's not kicking you. Really? Maybe there shouldn't be any kicking going on. Maybe you shouldn't be kicking life. Maybe it shouldn't be kicking you. Maybe unless you're like, I don't know, like swing dancing, like kicking together. You know what I mean? Like kicking around, dancing in circles, that kind of shit. That's cool. Whatever. I hope life is good and swell is the point. Um, so, uh, it's been a while since I have recorded much or written much. I've been really productive. I've just been working and making monies and accumulating nice things, you know? Playing games, watching movies, chilling and chillaxing and chatting with my homies. Yo, because that's how I hang. Um, and you know, I woke up this morning at 5 o'clock. I fell asleep at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Woke up at 5 in the morning. So two hours sleep and went to work for like a eight hour shift, whatever. Bit tired, bit sleep deprived, whatever. Doesn't really matter. But you know, it's, it gave me the edge. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go home and I'm just going to... Because, you know, when I'm awake and when I'm too conscious and in control with my mind and what I'm thinking, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, and I'm just filtering everything, it's it's harder for natural expression to find its way out from my home, through the door, so everyone can see it. You know, all my true thoughts keep hermiting. Uh, now that I'm so tired, I really don't give a fuck. All those filters are flying out and everything will just uh, roll out as it is. So, um, where do I start? Well, first of all, um, for the, any of those who might have any semblance of care or curious curiosity, or you might just basically give a shit, uh, how am I? I'm fine. I'm great. I'm, uh, I'm growing. You know, I mean, life, it's always about growth or comfort. Every choice you make, it's always towards growth or comfort. And I've got to say that I've got the nice balance. You know, I've been growing. I've been, as I said, I've been working and polishing my skills in that field and people skills, which is never really a bad thing to master. And hospitality is a good thing to help you really hone those people skills. Because if you're not good with people in hospitality, yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna last too long. You're not gonna like your job too much. I love my job. So um, I work in a really cool little cafe in Perth, West Perth. Um, a lot of cool people, you know, no, no, uh, you know, no Australians, which is nice, because even though I'm born here, I don't consider myself Australian. I don't know why anyone would be proud to consider themselves Australian, um, considering our bastardizational culture, uh, mixed blend, which is cool. But, you know, if, if we did have our own culture, what would it be of convicts and inbreds, really? So there's nothing to be proud of. So it's cool that I'm working with a whole bunch of different people, backgrounds, and makes things interesting, you know? And uh, I find that, you know, people from other places that come here generally are more engaging and more, I don't know, they listen, they're more attentive, they actually give a shit what you're saying, and they, maybe because their English isn't as well, they have to adapt, and they have to focus more on what you're saying to understand what the hell. But even people that know English, like, you know, Italians or whatever, like, still, you know, just more engaging. I think it's just an Australian thing to be, you know, ignorant and self-absorbed, maybe. Or maybe it's a, a westernizational American kind of thing and it's kind of rubbing off in Australia who's kind of following behind its uh, adult footsteps, you know, as the baby that Australia is. You know, aspiring to be bigger and better, just like his big brother, America. I don't know. But, um, so that's nice. I've been working, uh, I've been reading reading's good i haven't been writing as much you know they say if you want to write you should read just like if you want to make music it makes sense to listen to music that's you know um and i realize there's a lot of stuff out there to read and i've only got well i'm 25 now i've only got so many years left to learn so i've been reading a lot uh talking a lot hanging out with a select few quality people and you know not not the largest amount of people 
not flittering about, but that's fine, because, like, it is quality over quantity, so, uh, that's, that's been great, um, as you would be aware, now that we're at the five minute mark, I haven't had the internet for a while, so I've been in the dark for a little bit, uh, you could say I've kind of blipped out of existence for a little bit, because you know how it is, if you don't have Facebook, you practically don't exist at all, seriously, did you guys even know that I was still around? Did you, did you, or, you know, it was just like, well, oh, hey, it's that guy, it's Phoenix, hey, fuck, what do you do, like, uh, I don't know, man, um, I am sleep deprived, sorry if I'm, like, rambling a bit, but, you know, I tend to go on overdrive when I'm sleep deprived, and I'm an Aquarian, I'm meant to be a chatterbox, and so just, you know, Sonny's an Aquarian, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. anyway, um, speaking of Sonny, now that we're talking about people, um, there are some people I like to say hi to. Wait, is there? Not really. I'm a bit of a bastard. You know, whenever I think of people, all the pricks and assholes and backstabbing bitches come to mind. And how I want to put my two cents their way uh, to correct things. Just to call them out. You know, that's, that's me. I'm a very confrontational guy. A bit attitudinal. No, I wouldn't say I'm a bastard as much. But those that, you know... I love, those that I respect and appreciate, they know I love them and respect and appreciate them and they don't need my constant reassurance because they take the time here and there to spend with me and learn these things the hard way or the true way actually being with me and so I can show them these things. Um, those that don't really take the time to spend with me or get to know me but then they also mm, say a lot of stuff, you know, they have, they imply or they indicate somehow that they have a clue, which is like, how do you do that? How do you have a clue when you haven't done any of the stuff you normally need to do to get the clue? You know, such as like, if you, if you know so much about a person, it would make sense that you've actually hung out with that person before, like properly and not just like peripherally walked shoulder by shoulder within the same crowds, but never, you know? There's a few people like that. So I love you to all the people that know that I love you and thank you for being you and not being so self-absorbed and so, I don't know, superficial in what you're seeking to, uh, to bother appreciating me in my simplicity and my humility and humble ways, you know? Um, because, you know, it seems these days that unless you're a drug dealer or, you know, an artist or a musician or a great entertainer of some kind or you have something to offer, something to entertain with, um, you're not really worth the time. You know, you're not really worth, like, the dime. That's what I'm finding. Um, you know, as, as, as they say, it's, it's nice to be a good person. It's nice to be interesting. It's, it's cool to be cool. But at the end of the day... Who you are inside, that's just the dirt stuff. It's just dirt. What people actually pay attention to, what matters to people, what they look for, is what grows from that dirt and provides the fruit that they will benefit from. So, you know, and I've been working on that, all right? I mean, just, just, oh, I, I pick up that camera and show you right now. This, this, it's pretty sad. I've gotten into an obsessive, you know, ha uh, not habit, I'd say it's, it's a hobby of like collecting PlayStation games I can't really show much but like it, it that goes all the way up to the ceiling um, there's more just above there that you can't even see there's more above there that you can't even see it's yeah you can't even see shit it's pretty sad but pretty much there's like thousands of games on my walls because I'm such a cool cat gamer noob you know what I'm saying that was totally pointless, you couldn't see shit. But uh, I've been collecting that, and that's entertaining. It's a cheap and effective way to pass time. You buy a game for $2, $10, whatever, and you can keep playing it for years and years to come. I want to keep it so that you can see Megan Fox in the corner, because she's a right old devil. Look at her. Check her out. Hey, she's sexy. She's so hot that her very stare is melting that candle right there. You can't see it because... This is a PlayStation Eye camera, it's not the best quality. Uh, but you know, I've been collecting games, uh, I've been doing up my little tomb, I mean my room. It's been nice. Um, you know, filling with nice things. 
I don't know, I like games. You know, games, they keep the child alive. They allow you to connect with one another in a way which is not heavy, but light. And uh, I like competition, but not serious competition, you know? So games, you can blow your friend's head off or, you know, punch them in the guts a few thousand times and they'll just laugh at you and pat you on the back and say, well done, you know? And that's, pff, that's cool. That's practically unheard of, you know? So it's a good way to release frustration in a fun and respectful manner. Plus there's cooperative play and so many worlds within games. People say, why are you a gamer? Why do you play games? Why do you go out and do the real thing? Why do you read books? Why do you watch movies? Games is like an interactive movie. It's like a visual book that you can actually explore through and the experience will still be unique to you given how you play the game. I mean, really, how can you just discriminate between the mediums when games are, is a pretty full medium in terms of expression? You know, I'm talking really fast because there's actually quite a lot of stuff I'd like to say but there's just so little time so that's why I'm just like blah 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 and because I'm sleep deprived once again but uh returning to the point hi it's Phoenix I've been good I haven't been drinking this too much it's just that's all I have left I didn't get too many hours last week at work spent all my cash on my new guitar because hey since, you know, people only dig musicians or drug dealers these days, I figured, well, I don't want to be a drug dealer because that's too petty, you know, working off those that are vulnerable and weak and, you know, needy or just misguided in order to build myself up and gain power and confidence. It's just, it's just something sick about that. So I bought a guitar. I figured I'll make some music, you know, even though I, I can't really sing very well. And I can't even play guitar. I mean, quite literally, all, all I can do, mate, I don't even know how to tune this thing, so forgive me, it's not even tuned. All I can do is a two-string two play. Yeah. Watch me rocking it out. Rocking, rocking it out. Rock it out. I mean, that's, I don't even know what the fuck, you know. <laughs> that's, just, that's just embarrassing, really. That's just, I don't even know why I just did that. I'm just going to blame it on the wine, even though I've had, I think, three sips. Wait. There we are. Four sips. You know, maybe it was just like placebo. I knew I was going to have the fourth sip eventually, and hence it started already affecting me. Whatever. So I've been good collecting games, playing games in many ways. Not just PlayStation, not just board games, not just Mag Magic the Gathering. And yes, I am an uber nerd for that. Whatever. But I've been playing games socially. You know, life itself is a game, right? And going out and the social domain and, you know, getting wherever you're going. It's all a game. It's all a matter of objectives and sub-objectives and resources available and people you can connect with that help you along the way. And blah, blah, blah. You know, it's about taking opportunities and being aware and being engaging and interactive. That's what it's all about. So it's really about games within games within games. Kind of like a fractal of games. Um, so that's been good. I've been having fun. I've been chilling out, kind of hermiting. And when I do go out, I've been going to DeVille's pad, uh, dancing there. I just did my first swing dance lesson last night or the night before. Last night. So tired, I couldn't remember. And it was so fucking exciting. I mean, I love swing dancing. It's like your soul in the form of a dance just going poing, like exploding out and it doesn't get brighter than with swing dancing your soul shining out it's beautiful fun very cheeky jovial that's why i like it i like to keep the child alive you know i think everyone's a child and people just grow up and they become taught and conditioned to abandon that idea and that way of relating to the self as child to the point where they believe that they are adults mm. Really, it's like you're always just a child. You just get bigger and more convoluted and complicated and, you know, and numb in some ways, I guess, or narrow-minded and blind in some ways. But if you can keep your eyes open as much as you can from the get-go, don't let any fuckers close your eyes. And allow yourself to feel everything without closing off just because some things you felt wasn't so nice. Then you can actually get a, a, a fuller, experience out of life and you know even the bad things that happen 
the, the mistakes we make, the flaws in our trials, they're necessary. And I think you learn more from your fuck-ups than you do from your successes. I mean, as they say, the fail, the word fail itself is an acronym for first action in learning. And it is the first action in learning. When you fuck up and you make a mistake, that's that first step you need to take for you to realize, hey, I'm not going to do that again. Next time, I'm going to do it differently. And you do it better. You might fuck up again, but then you learn not to do that again. And you do it better and better. And that's how you perfect your game. Just like with a game. Like, you know, if you get killed by, uh, let's say, a monster in uh, Dead Space, you know, it just jumps out and kills you, which happens a lot because, fuck, that's a tough game and unpredictable and fucking scary. Um, you know, you don't go, oh, I died. That's shit. I'm not playing this anymore. You go, well, fuck it. I'm just gonna like reload to my last checkpoint. And now that I've learned from that mistake, I'm totally gonna be out with my soul blade to fucking dismember that motherfucker in a bit. And you do it. You might fail again, and then you improve the actual act of dismembering the ship to bits. Um, bit of a de elaborate example. Anyway, I was going to, like, talk about, like, certain people that have been saying stuff, but who really cares? It's not like people are like, oh, my God, have you heard, like, like what, you know, this person said about Phoenix? Oh, my God, I totally did. That is so bad. Oh, but did you hear this? It's like, people don't give a fucking shit. Really? People have their own shit to worry about, to think about. But still, there is stuff being said. And it's not a matter of reputation. It's not a matter of dignity, you know, because people that know me, they know me, and they're, whatever they judge of me, that is what you know actually has any worth to me. I only give a shit people give a shit about people that have actually taken the time to give a shit about me. Everyone else can get fucked, but like I said, not reputation or dignity. It's about really safety, 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 safety. Uh, I I've, I'm I'm a growing you know life. Life is growing on me. You know, I wouldn't say I'm a fully pledged fan, but I'm not so anti anymore. You know, I'm enjoying the ride. I'm not going to lock myself in forever and wish I lived the longest life I can, but I'm not in a rush to get off this ride. I'm enjoying it, you know, and it's amazing, the, the, the butterfly effect. The little things that people say and do over time that accumulate and build these intricate webs and networks that connect in such a way that eventually it just takes one nasty spider to follow this line and this network to draw a venomous bite onto an unsuspecting innocent victim because it believed that it deserved to be hunted as prey. Now, I don't want to be hunted as prey by anyone and take this to extremes, take it to even a lesser extreme. When I say hunted as, as, as prey, I mean condemned or judged. Uh, you know, based on something that, you know, people have said or uh, cause people, you know. I don't want people to turn away and be like, oh, Phoenix, I've heard this and this and this. And if they do, at least approach me about it. The problem is most people don't approach you about it these days because they're fucking cowards. And they would rather just take the two cents from everybody until they've got 200 cents and think, well, that constitutes the full buck. It doesn't. I don't give a fuck about your two cents. I'll give you a buck. And then you can tell me what I'm worth. But people don't need the buck to say get fucked. They'll just take the two cents from everyone else. And that's how they roll. Because it isn't really about the truth. It's not really about accuracy. It's just about what fits in with the script shared with all the other actors in my scene. You know what I'm saying? So, before things spin out of control... I will end up addressing, not in this video, but I will end up addressing some things that are being said. Maybe not even because it's really going to affect me in any way. You know, short term or long term. Maybe it will, but not really. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not too fearful of that. Just because I think it's the right thing to do when somebody does something dishonorable, you know, unfair and uncalled for, unprovoked. You know, whether it be slander, attacking your name, or dropping some dirt, which could be a liability on your life, like, could endanger you, you know, or at least make your affairs less fruitious, fru fruitious, whatever the fucking word is, fruitful. 
Um, you know, just to be honest, like, I just want to call cunts out for being motherfucking cunts. Fucking cunt balls. Fucking hairy, motherfucking flaming cunt balls. I just want to call out those fuckers and deal with you personally. And hey, if any of you have an issue with me, do the same. Since it's like such an open world and we're all free to talk about each other behind our backs, why don't you just talk to my face? Why don't you just ask me or tell me, you know, about something or something. It's really that easy. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's quite a rant, isn't it? It's a bit of a rant. 20 minutes. Who the fuck would still be listening now? You know? Um, you know, I'm going to go now. I'll be back. Later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, uh, drugs are bad, okay? Stay away from them. They fuck with your head. Yo. Yeah.